So last night, I think because I saw these pictures of these really, really detailed Ninja Turtles movie action figures, I wound up falling down this really deep rabbit hole about everything Ninja Turtles. In particular, I was looking up all kinds of things about the Ninja Turtles comics. Like a lot of people my age, I was a huge Ninja Turtles fan as a kid. I remember so clearly being like 7 or 8 years old, and I went to my friend's birthday party. And at this birthday party, he had a clown, and at some point the clown offers to either write or draw on us with these markers that he had. So I have the clown give me like a blue Leonardo wristband thing, and I want him to write Ninja Turtles on me. And somehow he managed to spell ninja wrong, I don't know if it was some kind of a clown joke, or he just didn't know how to spell ninja, but I'm pretty sure I didn't say Niger Turtles. The point is, we are at the height of the Ninja Turtles craze, but my focus was almost entirely on the cartoon and the action figures. Aside from one issue of the comics I had that forever burned Cuddly the Cowlick into my memory, I knew almost nothing about the comics. But even then, from what I can tell from the tiny tastes of the comics I would get from different Ninja Turtles media, I could tell that they were very, very different from the cartoon. In fact, not only were the comics totally different from the cartoons, but they were two separate comics universes. The Ninja Turtles Archie comics and the Ninja Turtles Mirage comics. And both of those were very different from each other too. And strangely, probably the biggest gateway for me learning about the different Ninja Turtles comics was the game Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. As the name implies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters was a fighting game. Well, actually, it was three different fighting games. You see, the Super NES, the Genesis, and the NES versions were all very different from each other. And it's the Super NES version, which is the one that I had, that I think contains the biggest mystery of all of these games. I think what really made Tournament Fighters a special game was that it took characters from all the various comic universes and the cartoon and put them all together in the same game. Of course, you've got the four Ninja Turtles, Shredder and the Rat King, who existed in all three of these continuities. Then, representing the Archie comic series, you have War, who was this purple dinosaur-looking guy who honestly, at the time, I used to confuse him with Triceraton. You have Armagon, who's some kind of a shark guy, but he's not a street shark, he's a futuristic space shark. And then there was Wingnut, who was some kind of a bat guy from outer space who looked like a superhero, and him I was actually familiar with because he crossed over into the cartoon very briefly. As for characters that were exclusive to the cartoon, you just had Chrome Dome, who was uh, the samurai-looking killer robot guy. But it was really the other two characters in this game that got me curious about aspects of the Ninja Turtles universe that I was previously unfamiliar with. First, there is the character Karai. Now, when you look in the Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters instruction manual, every character has a description, a drawing, and what their goals are in the tournament. But when you look at Karai, there's just a red box that says Restricted. Very mysterious. And then, of all the characters, and keep in mind this is a game that includes Shredder, and it includes the Rat King, Karai winds up being the last boss. Now, as someone who at the time, 1993 when this game came out, considered himself to be a hardcore Ninja Turtles fan, who had seen every episode of the cartoon, had a lot of the action figures, and the ones I didn't, I knew what was out there, I had never even heard of this character that was somehow so important that she was made the final boss of a game. Clearly, I actually knew nothing about Ninja Turtles. What I would find out later was that Karai was actually in there to represent the Mirage Comics continuity of Ninja Turtles. In fact, at the release of the game, she was a very new character having also debuted in 1993. Karai, at least in this continuity, was a Japanese boss of the Foot Clan. At the time she's introduced in New York, the Foot Clan is in disarray because Leonardo killed Shredder. This leads to a power struggle for control of the New York Foot Clan, and Karai comes to New York to set shit straight. And since that story arc, the character's gone through a lot of different changes in different continuities. Sometimes she's Shredder's daughter, sometimes she's Splinter's daughter, sometimes she's a love interest for Leonardo. Which, okay, I know that a turtle's got a big schwantz, and I'm not gonna show it to you, but you can look it up or you can trust me. But you're gonna get Salmonella. Is it really worth it?
So after learning about all these interesting twists and turns that had happened to Karai throughout the history of her character, I thought back to one other character in the game that I didn't know about. That character is Asuka. Asuka is a scantily clad lady ninja whose goal in the tournament according to the instruction manual is... She is a master of ninjutsu and wishes to own her own dojo. And after finding out all the interesting things that I did about Karai, her role in the Foot Clan, her different origin stories, I figured surely this other character would have just as rich and complicated of a background. And I was wrong. Officially, as I would find out, Asuka is a character who was created exclusively for the Super NES version of Tournament Fighters. But something about that just didn't smell right to me. You have this game that's very consciously making the effort to combine different characters from different versions of the Ninja Turtles universe, and rather than put some shine on another lesser known character or put in someone everybody knows like Casey Jones, they decide to put in some random Mai Shirinui cosplayer for no apparent reason? I mean, maybe they just needed some more butt cheeks in the game, but the Genesis version solved that by throwing April O'Neil in what appears to be a Blaze Fielding from Streets of Rage costume. In fact, there is a theory that the reason why Asuka exists is that at some point they were going to put April O'Neil in the Super NES version, but then they decided that they were going to use her to move the story along instead. But that doesn't make all that much sense to me, because surely, by the time that they're already putting characters into the game, you would think they would have some idea that they're going to be using April as a story NPC. And also, it's a fighting game. It's not as if having her in the story, but then having her also be playable, would be some big immersion-breaking thing that would ruin the game. This is a genre where it's standard for characters to fight differently colored versions of themselves. I don't think it'd be a deal-breaker. There's also a theory that Asuka was brought into the game to try to appeal to the Japanese market. And in all fairness, they did give the Japanese market some extra Asuka butt cheeks, but that's more to do with American censorship policies. But ultimately, it's not as if Asuka was ever front and center in any of the promotional materials. I don't think people in Japan, where Ninja Turtles was already pretty popular, would be like, Hey, like, I'm on the fence about this Ninja Turtles game, but hey, now they got this Japanese chicken there, so let's buy it. What's probably the real reason that Asuka was put in this game wasn't discovered until 17 years after the game came out. And it was in 2010 when a beta version of the game found its way online. In this beta version, there's two characters who aren't present, Wingnut and Asuka. At least, it was believed that they weren't in it until it was discovered that they could be accessed by using codes. They were incomplete versions of the characters, but they were present. Well, kind of. You see, there is one interesting change to Asuka. In the beta version, she was named Mitsu. And while Asuka was supposedly a character who was made up just for the Super NES version of this game, Mitsu is the name of a character who already existed in the Ninja Turtles universe. She wasn't from the Mirage comics, she wasn't from the Archie comics, and she wasn't from the cartoon. She was from the movies. So in March of 1993, when Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters was already in development, the third Ninja Turtles movie was released. In this movie, the Ninja Turtles go back in time to feudal Japan where they find themselves entrenched in a conflict between a tyrannical ruler and a rebel faction. This rebel faction is led by a woman named Mitsu. Now, with the Ninja Turtles movies being a huge success up until this point, and with Konami making an effort to combine all of the different Ninja Turtles continuities in one game here, it's a no-brainer that they would have to include somebody from the movies. And with Turtles 3 coming out mere months before the game did, it would make sense for it to be someone from that movie. But unfortunately, as you might already know, the third Ninja Turtles movie was a massive flop, both commercially and critically. While it didn't necessarily lose money, it vastly underperformed its predecessors. Essentially, this movie was the canary in the coal mine for the decline of the Ninja Turtles popularity. Nothing good could possibly come from putting this character in the game and reminding everybody once again of what a failure that movie was. But now with all that being said, even in the beta version, 
This character looks very different from how Mitsu looks in the movie. It's possible that Mitsu was replaced by Asuka very early in development and they only came up with a new name right before the game came out. That's hard to tell for sure, but if we had access to some concept art or maybe an earlier beta, that might tell us the truth. Perhaps the plan with including her in this game was to get Mitsu ready to go into the other Ninja Turtles continuities. After all, just look at Karai, who has had, at this point, so many different versions and different continuities with different backstories. Why not Mitsu? I don't think it's too far-fetched that there might have been bigger plans for this character had Ninja Turtles 3 not been such a huge disappointment. But that's all I have to say about that for now. If you like this video, check out my video about the Blockbuster World Video Game Championships, which actually included tournament fighters as a game. I'm out of here.